Welcome to the 2018 Hyperlight XLR 29HFS. We're going to start right back here with your garage portion. So you just got the two locks there, pretty standard. Just going to flip them around, lock up the handles here, swing them back around to the side. Got the handles right here, pull them down. Be careful, it is a little bit heavy. Come down to the ground, and here you've got access to your full garage. So you can see you've got your table here. You've got the fold down couches as well as the bed up top. All of that we'll get into once we're inside. Just want to get through the outside first. So that's the opening of your back door. Just going to bring it back up, push it in, bring it back around, lock it in place. Now the unit doesn't come with padlocks for your locks here, but if you want to pick them up, definitely recommend doing so. This is then down the side here. You've got your fuel dispensing switch. One of the switches inside is the master power for this. I'll show you that once we get there. But when you're looking to turn it on, you're just gonna hit that switch. That'll turn on your pump and you can pump some fuel. Now as for your pump itself, it's right in here. So you can see you've got your standard pump end. Right. So you're just going to stick that into whatever you're filling up and then good to go. As for filling up the storage tank for your gas right here, so you're just going to undo that. And then just like filling up your car, stick the hose into there, fill it up with fuel. As always, you don't want to overfill it. So once it stops, once the pump stops, let it stop. So following down this black little square at the bottom here is your power inlet. So you can see you've just got that notch right there as well as that little metal tab. You're gonna line up the metal tabs, just push it in, the eighth turn locks it in. And then you got the threads in the back there that you can push up and thread it in to really lock it in place. And as you follow the cord back, So you've got your 50 amp end here. Now in being such a big unit, it does, can pull a lot of power through it. So you do have the 50 amps. Now most, some campsites won't necessarily have that. So we do provide you with the dog bone adapter, which goes from 50 down to 30 amps, which does kind of limit some of your power usage, but you still get most of your use. Now most campsites will have that inlet. You just plug right into it and you're good to go. And if you're looking to plug in at home to say charge your batteries or run your fridge, we do provide you with a 15 amp adapter as well. And right above your power port, you can see labeled on the side here is your satellite inlet. And right above that is your cable inlet. So just coax cable plugs into there, powers up at your TV location. Over to the left here, at the very top, we've got your fresh water connection. So you take a water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, fills up your fresh water tank. You know it's full. Once you start getting water spitting out of the vents along the bottom here. And right below it's your city water connection. So you just take the same water hose, plug it into there, pressurizes the water lines throughout the trailer. And then in the very bottom is your black tank flush. So over time you may notice that once you drain out your black tank, you'll uh, go and check your monitor panel and it's still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. That's usually just some dirt hanging around in the tank. So what this does, you just take a water hose, plug it in there, flushes out the tank for you, and you're good to go. Now, whenever you're flushing it out, you do want to make sure your gate valves are open. So your gate valve is just right down here. So you can see you've just got this little cap right there, opens up. Just got all those four ears. Take note of those ears because your hose attaches the exact same way. Just plugs into there, little twist, locks in. So you can see in the back there, you've got that black valve, controls your black tank. Your black tank is filled from your toilet, so of course, your dirtiest water. You're gonna to wanna to dump that one out first. Once that's done, you can come to the gray right here, dump that out. And then in the very front is your galley. Do that one last, cause that's filled just from your kitchen sink. So generally your cleanest water. Whereas the gray back here is gonna be filled from your shower and your bathroom sink. And these two black ports right there, are just tank vents, nothing to worry about with those. And then the front here, Sorry, they're actually back there a bit more. So the frontward blue um, hose right there is just a fresh tank drain. So undo that, drain out your fresh water tank. Right here is your pre-assembled location for a generator. 
If you're looking to have one installed, give us a call beforehand or have it done by a certified shop. And then in the front here, you just got the little service light there, little button on the left turns on the lights. Right below it's your battery box. Of course, as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back, the battery is charging for you. Also right in the very back, right behind your battery box, is a solar panel plug-in. So if you wanted to buy a solar panel, charge your batteries that way, you've got the power to do so. Right underneath this black cover here, propane tanks. So they're both full. You can see right here, you've got your po arrow pointing over here, letting us know that we're drawing off of this tank right now. That red back there on your regulator is letting you know that it is not full of propane right now. If you're to open it up, it'll go green, letting you know that propane is now present and you're good to go. If it were to go red again, of course letting you know that your tank is now empty, so you just close that off, switch over to the other tank here, and run off of this one while you get that one filled. And then in the front is your smart jack. Just press up, she goes up, down, goes down, lights, all that. With your propane cover, you've also got these two knobs up top. Just undo those, you can open up the flap and have access to your propane tanks without removing it. All right, here's a little storage compartment. So inside it, we've got your water hose, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. We've also just got your sewer hose. So it does extend out to 20 feet, and those are the two ears that we were talking about, how you hook it into your sewer system. Also got a little water hose here. This attaches right by your shower back here, so we'll just do that real quick. There's this little port right there, just open that up, it comes open, push that quick connect back, attach the hose, hot and cold water, let the standard garden hose end. That's that. Of course, if you've used it and ran water through it, you're going to want to just stretch it out, open up the nozzle, make sure you get the water out of it before you store it away. And then in box here, you can see the customers opted for the weight distribution set, so we just got that all boxed up there for them. Now in each corner of the trailer, you'll find these stabilizer jacks. Those are run by this jack right here. So they're not for lifting the trailer. If you try to lift the trailer with them, they generally just fold. All you're looking to do is just contact the ground and another turn or so just to firm it up. And what that'll do is it'll just get rid of the bounce in the trailer as you're walking through it or driving into it. And there we go. So inside here, you just got the little motion sensor light. Working our way back again. So you just got this GFI protected outlet there, as well as a cable and satellite outlet. And right here is a mount for your TV. So if you wanted to watch TV outside, you got the power to do so. You've also, of course, got the two speakers with it. And right here is just your hot water tank. So line up that good way, pops open. Before you ever turn it on, you just want to hit this pressure relief valve. Make sure that bit of water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know that it is full and it's safe to fire it up. We're firing it up with electricity just down in the bottom left corner here is a switch turn that on it turns it on and for running it with propane the switch is just inside now i will explain a reset procedure once we get back inside the reset button is just right here on the right over to the left this right here is just a service port for your fridge nothing there for you to worry about this here is the exhaust for your furnace, so if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure nothing's blocking that, it does get hot. And then to the very back here, we just got the entranceway to your garage. So for your steps, just pick up the bottom, pull it out, flip that other step over. The doors are on a friction hinge, so they just kind of stay where you leave them. So as you come inside here, the four switches on the bottom, the one on the left is a porch light in the back. The one on the left here, or the center left, is your roof and fan. The one on the right is the lights back here. And the one on the very far right is your power for your uh, fuel system. On the top left is a porch light, and on the right I believe is just blank. And then up top here is your bed control. So you work it down, see the couches then come down. So 
the beds currently supported by these pins. So if we bring the couches up, lifts the weight off of the pins and you can remove the pins. There is one at each corner. Just take some of the pressure off. Then as we go down, you can see the bed then comes down with it. Exposing your two windows. Now before we get down all the way, I just want to pull up on that release. Slide the couch out. And this pen right here comes out. Now this of course would be if your bed was up. I guess I'll just go through that in another minute here. Right, so lifting it up, just watching this hole right there until I can see through it, and then pinning it in place. Then we'll come down with it. Remove our locking pins. Swing it back up. And then you can see here, locks in place. Continue down. You can then pull back on the slider, unlocking the back and folding it over. And then you can bring it down to be used as a dinette, the seating area. Whatever you please. Now with the pins here, you can see you've got multiple different holes down the sides. You can choose whatever height you like. So down all the way like that, you've then of course got your dinette. Or you move the table off to the side. And flip the backs back over making sure this leg here is extended. It then creates a second bed. Just like 
Look at that. This thing up here, as well as down in the left bottom left corner there. We just got these little air vents. So you're just gonna push them over. Just opens up, allows you to vent, vent fumes, whatever it may be, from the garage portion here. And of course, you've also got the ladder for accessing the top bunk. Fire extinguisher by the door, standard pull the pin, point and shoot. Emergency exit's fairly standard as well. Just pulling on the red tab here, pushing the window out and hopping out. So as we make our way up, we're into the bathroom here. So you can see it just got storage, and storage, and storage. And up on the wall here, just got the light switch. Below it is your GFI protected outlet. So test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have that light coming on, probably don't have some outlets working. It's just one good thing to check. For your roof vent, you can hit on, and it'll open itself up, as well as turn the fan on. You've of course got control over your vent speed, one, two, three, or four, or you can turn it right off. Sink of course hot and cold water. Right below your, car, your uh, cabinets there is your power converter. So you can see right in the center here, top and center, we've got all of your breakers. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on. And on the right side is all of your fuses, so if a fuse ever pops, you'll just get a little red LED beside it, letting you know exactly which one's popped. And then behind us here, we've got your shower with the deluxe head. And of course, your toilet, with the foot valve just being on your right. So, making our way up again. up into the main part of the camper here. So I'm just going to run outside over up these stairs. So this door is the exact same as the one in the back. It's just on a friction hinge. It sits where you leave it. And then for your steps here, you just got this little yellow knob here. You're just gonna pull that either way, just undoes the latches, and then you can pull it back. And they open right up. Another fire extinguisher right by the entrance, same thing, pull the pin, point, and shoot. And then up the wall from it, we've got your slide out control. Press and hold out, the slide makes its way out. Once that slides out all the way, you'll just hear a couple of hums from the motors letting you know that they are fully extended. slide out control you've got the three three switches here the one on the left is your awning light so you can see the little strip right below your awning there the one in the center is a little porch light or step light which you can't really see with the steps out and then on the right is your interior lights right above your light switches is also just your awning so do make sure your door is about 90 degrees just because it does contact the awning arm Press and hold extend, and the awning will make its way out. Once you get to the end, you'll just see this little white flap come down. A black flap, sorry. And that's that. Well, with the awning extended, if it were to rain, it's of course going to hold water. So you can grab either the front or the rear arm and just pull it down, changing the pitch of the awning, allowing the water to then run off. And if you like this angle better, just because it gives you more shade, you may do the same thing at the back arm here.
However, before you bring it back in, you just want to make sure that they are fully extended and straight, just so that you're not bending anything. And then we'll press and hold her tracked, and she'll come back in. Now you do need to be careful when extending and retracting your awning, just so that you're not doing it backwards. You do want it so that the fabric is going over the top of your tube, just so that it doesn't hold water and rot itself. So right above your sink here, you just got a little light there, which is controlled by this switch here. One on the right does the light, the one on the left does this light right above the uh, style here. It's a plastic sink cover, so don't put anything hot on it. And two sinks here, of course, hot and cold water. Storage above, microwave here, standard residential type microwave with the addition of convection, so you can cook in here as well. The roof vent, the light, and the fan. Of course, propane stove, whenever you're using it, is putting off fumes, so you want to make sure that fan is on. Before the stove, you're just going to turn it over to light. Hit it with a lighter, it should fire right up. Now the first time using it, if you've been away from the trailer for a while, it might take a minute or two just to clear the air out of the propane lines before it fires up. That's perfectly normal. Again, more storage below. For your fridge, two buttons there. The one on the left turns it on. The one on the right just says which one it's running off of. So running on auto is gonna have it first run off of AC power. So the shore cord that we're plugged into and then if the shore cord would be taken away It would automatically switch to gas or if you wanted to solely run it on gas You can have that button come out and it'll run just on gas For temperature control, you've just got that slider there all the way at the top is the coldest It'll get all the way at the down all the way down is a little bit warmer Furnace return grate right below it. So just want to make sure that doesn't get blocked off by anything and then into your slide out here on the right side is the light switch and for the dinettes the legs just come out backs come in and fill it fairly standard and then right up here with your tv so this light switch right there turns on the lights on your outside speakers the stereo there power button turns it on so you've then got all the all your selections you've of course got am fm hdmi usb bluetooth uh, when you first connect to bluetooth it's going to ask you for a code it is that code right there four zeros uh, is is linked into your tv so if you're to run it on av it is going to play your tv sound and then right here you just got your speaker controls so you've got outside you can turn them on or off and same thing with your inside speakers and for turning it off you just press and hold the power button and it turns itself off Right up on the wall here is the thermostat. So the power button turns it on. It's also your selection, so just hit that again. It'll come into your fan speed. When it comes to your fan speed, I'm gonna recommend you just leave it on auto. It's kind of the most hassle-free. Uh, unless, of course, you're solely just looking to move air, in which case you can use use high or low. After your fan speed, if you hit mode again, it'll come into cool. So it'll turn on your air conditioner and select your temperature on the side here. That'll, of course, turn on the air conditioner. With the air conditioner running, you basically got two different options. You can have this louver in the back here closed, in which case it's using all of the roof ducting to move its air. Or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you're just going to want to open that up, cool off this area as quickly as you can, and then you can close it off and start dispersing your air. Come back at your thermostat, if you just hit mode again, it'll come into furnace. So again, just select your temperature. It'll turn off the air conditioning fan. It'll turn on your furnace. So the furnace is just moving all of its air through all of these floor vents there. Got a little four holes all across the trailer. And then if you just hit mode again, it'll go just up back to off and it'll just restart its cycle. And right above your TV here, you just got this little blue pouch that does contain all of your owner's manuals, your keys. If you've got any questions, it's a good place to check. 
And then up into the bedroom here. So I should have gone on the other side. Just got the light switch up in the wall there. Turns on the lights, of course. In the back, these lights are controlled by a switch in the back corner here. Then you can also see back here, you've just got the little USB charging ports as well as a power outlet there and over there. There is a TV backer right here, so you can mount a TV. You've got your TV uh, power outlet right there, as well as your satellite or your antenna outlet right at the bottom. Up top is your cable and satellite. Now, if you're ever looking to use your antenna, just turn that button on right there. That green light will come on, letting you know that it's powered up. All right above your head, of course, is the roof vent. So you just turn that to open it. Power button in there right there. Turns on the fan. This roof vent right here is pre-wired for an air conditioner. So if you wanted to do another AC down the road, you've got the power to do so. And if you just pull up at the foot of your bed, you've got more storage underneath. And then of course the closet space over there and over here. And then right above your head, kind of in your entranceway to the bedroom, is your smoke alarm here. So just press and hold test there. There you go. Also down on the right there is an LP detector. Works just the same as the smoke detector, except for propane. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off. And that's about that. So if you got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.